Yes. It's over almost before it begins, this. And there's that extra element of race readership as well, isn't there? You have to know your way around this velodrome here, Joe. Not just about the legs. Yeah, well, it's very unusual to have a three-up sprint in match sprinting. It's normally one-on-one, -on -one, so you have your qualifying, you have your, your one rider versus another rider, and the win winner goes through, and often it's best of three. Here we haven't got the best of three, but also we've got three riders on the track, which is it's a very different situation for sprinting. A lot of these riders will be used to this sort of situation from when they're racing when they were younger, sort of at more local competitions, but it's a, it's a relatively new format on the world stage. It's a real crowd pleaser. Everyone loves seeing this sort of action. And you can just see here our dog rider is coming around to the front, making sure he is at the head of affairs as we come through to the bell, which is going to be this time around. It moves very, very quickly. It will mean the man in the orange from the Netherlands. Iso, the man from the Andaman Islands in India. He's there in the blue. And trying to get round is Lendl, who's the most experienced of the three here. It's three up towards turn four as they come into that final straight. Iso closest to getting around, but he can't do it. And it's Romain from the Netherlands who makes it through to the night semi-final. Job done nicely there for our young Dutch rider. He's just acknowledging the crowd. And as I was saying, it's very difficult when you've got three runners on the track, when you're so used to racing one-on-one, -on -one, when you've got an extra person up for that. So an extra person to try and keep your eyes on. You know, you can't have eyes in the back of your head. So if you're in the middle, do you keep an eye on the person in front of you? Do you try and look over your shoulder and see what the guy behind you is doing? Um, often the sort of safest situation is to get yourself to the front, lead it out, and make everyone else with, have the work to do to try and get around. And you can just see here, he almost makes it on the line for ESO of India, but not quite. Well, ESO, we've seen him progress, haven't we, since such a young man, junior and jerseys in competitions around the world. But tonight's got to the man wearing 23 from the Netherlands, Lars Romain. Keep your eye on him. It's a completely different generation of Dutch sprinters in particular turned up to the Champions League this year. Of course, a few having the Olympics in mind. And Jeffrey Hoogland going for a kilo world record attempt in, on Halloween, 31st of October, in Aguascalientes. So um, it's a strange one. Harry Leff racing the world champion, not here with um, Jeffrey Hoogland, who he spends a lot of his time racing against around the world. So um, he will be completing that uh, record attempt next week, 31st of October. Hopefully he won't get scared, especially on that night, <laughs> especially in Mexico as yeah. well. <laughs> Moving on. He too sees Kevin Santiago Quintero Tavarro turn up and ready for action. He's a world champion in the Kieran discipline, but of course in this sprint, he's wearing his Colombian jersey. I tell you what, we've got snazzy new jerseys this year as well, haven't we? We do have snazzy new jerseys, so riders have their uh, individual sponsors, their personal sponsors on the front of the jersey. So that's um, a real sort of quite unique thing in track cycling. You know, you normally race for your nation as opposed to your sponsors. You know, it's not like on the road where you have your road team with all those sponsors on. So this is a really good opportunity for track riders to, to showcase their personal sponsors, have that big sort of logo on the front of their skin suits uh, for us all to see. Well, we saw Tom de Reich there from France. This is Callum Saunders wearing the black of New Zealand. Same drill here. Only one can go through. Two have to sit out the rest of the individual sprint competition. It can be a long night if you aren't on it from the start. But this is the top level. This is the UCI Track Champions League. And it's game on now. First of five rounds. Four countries, four cities, and that big double, big night. Oh, and our first crash of this year's Champions League. Gun goes, and that's that. We do it again. Yeah. Yes, you could just see here, just to get his feet out the pedals, they're, they're clipped in with clipless pedals, plus the toe straps over the top for extra security. So just took a little bit of time there to get himself unclipped. What on earth happened there? Thankfully, more embarrassing than anything. He's a big boy, and he'll get over it. All ready to go, then. Heads on, and this is where that experience comes into play, as you're saying, Joe. Go again. 
Yeah, exactly. The experience of having those restarts when things don't go exactly how you might have planned them. You know, these things happen. They are racing incidences, which which happen all the time. So experience does pay off. Um, the, the experience of racing a three-up sprint will also be more familiar to those that have done the first two series of the Track Champions League. So we've got a, quite a mix of riders at this year at this year's league. We've got a lot of riders who are who are new to the league uh, and some very experienced riders as well. So. Definitely the experience of racing these three up sprints in front of the crowd like this, having to be so warmed up as well, because it's the first event of the night. And as you've been saying, if, if you're not first over the line, that is it for your sprint competition. So full warm up as much as you can before this race. Well, they've managed to get round a lap and a half, half the race done. And this is where the speed goes because Dirach wants to try and launch it. Here he comes, the bell will now ring, meaning one lap, 250 meters of this Palma Mallorca velodrome to go, and De Reich has really stolen a march here. He's got a bike length and a half as they come through the back straight. Turn three goes by, turn four slips into the background, De Reich is still out in front, and despite the fall, that's just pretty much nerves. It's easy, De Reich is into the semis. Yeah, he looked very in control at the end there, no problem at all, just a little pat on the back there. Nicely through to the next round. Just in control, leading it out, N no stress. Knew what he wanted to do as we look at Marta Bayona, seeing her compatriot, Kevin Santiago Quintero Chavarro, not able to make it through to the semis. That means, though, he can concentrate on his Track Champions League debut in the rainbow mm. jersey later on. Yeah. And I have been reassured they have got two um, sets of numbers, so he hasn't got to switch his race numbers over to his world champion's jersey. Speaking to Elise Andrews earlier, she's also got the same situation, two different skin suits to race in this evening, so two sets of numbers have been provided. It's better we don't want any safety pin accidents. Doesn't though. normally happen, to be honest, so this is good. Two out of the six heats are done, and Large Romain, alongside Tom de Rache, are our first semi-finalists. Here's the treat. Who's going to join them in the semi final You can see with the draw, they already know who they could face. So it's Truman, Cole, or Yakovlev to join Romain and de Rache in the first of the semi-finals. Who will it be, though? Everybody at the start line sat up and ready. And let's meet the riders. Here are their vital statistics. Tallest of the lot, Mikhail Yakovlev representing Israel, left hand side. Weighing in at 106 kilos. And look at that max power, eh? Almost 3,000 watts. I believe that is the highest max power out of anybody in the Track Champions League competition. So, wow. yeah, what a monster. Alongside him, Dan Call, who we saw. And at the bottom in the British colours, it's a warm welcome to Joe Truman. Yakovlev has been very solid, improving in both years so far that he's had in the UCI Track Champions League. Truman, of course, coming at the British setup, and we all know what the Dutch male sprinters can do. Yeah, so Dutch male sprinting supremely strong at the moment. We've got a mix of sort of youth and experience at this year's Track Champions League. Of course, Harry Le Frazen will be up in our final heat. Uh, but plenty of younger Dutch riders as well taking part at this competition. A lot of experience at sort of European Championship level. So huge to up for some of those riders. Uh, Joe Truman currently on the front here, as you mentioned, representing Great Britain. Um, we see him part of the team sprint squad for GB. We see him racing Kieran's as well. So another really experienced rider sort of grabbing this opportunity to take part in individual sprint. And here is the bell, final lap now. And it is Truman who's taken it on. He's got a big gap here, but there's also plenty of room to rush into if you have the speed. And those big watts are being put in the pedals now by Yakov. They put there's a lot of work to do as they get to the final turn into the home straights. And despite it being close, Truman still looked like he might have had that. But we shall see. Oh, the graphics call it for Truman. Yeah, very close to the line there, so he led it out really early. And you can just see down the home straight here, he just dips down onto the blue. That's called the Cote d'Azur. And Yakovlev here is uh, coming around on the outside. Here's, here's the final shot. This is coming out of turn four. Joe Truman's gone really early. You can just mm. see here that he's just struggling to hold on, even hold on to the track. And there is Yakovlev on the line, not quite making it past there, but... Whew. Tough, so, tough way to win a heat there for Joe Truman. Certainly went he's for a it. swim down there in the Cote d'Azur, yeah. didn't he? He's in the water for a while, but holding on. 
Truman then in. And for Quintero, who we saw there, it's thinking about his event, the Kirin. A reminder that there's equal points for winning equal events, and it all adds up to the league table. If you're watching for the first time this year, the UCI Track Champions League sees a league table at the end of every week. Top of the league wears the leader's jersey the next time. And we'll see them walking past the trophy as they pick up the jersey later on. They know what they can win when they get to London in the final round. There's a lot of riding to do. And a lot of superstars to take. I'm starting with this man, Matthew Richardson. Hello to the defending champion. Hello indeed, yes. Yeah, so one of the very few men in the world that can say he's beaten Harry LeFraser at, at pretty much anything. Sam Dakins here from New Zealand. 27-year-old from Auckland. And up against Tim van Loon. He comes from that very strong part of the Netherlands Dutch team sprint. He was a champion at the Euros earlier this year. Has been a continental champion in the under-23s for the individual sprint, so he knows what he's doing. But as Joe is explaining, these three-up sprints, they just add something very different into the mix. It's not the same game. No, it's not the same game. So if you're at the back, you've got the best view of being able to see your two opponents that you're racing against. No one can spring a surprise if they're both in front of you. But of course, you've got further to get around. You've got two bike lengths to get around if you want to win the race when the sprint is on. Um, so it's, it's a tricky situation. It's a tricky sort of decision to make. You know, do I want to lead it out but there could be some very fresh legs behind me to try and come round me? Or do I want to risk having further to come round? But you can just see a little bit of shoulder to shoulder there with Matt Richardson. Richardson, the man from Western Australia, is there at the front. He makes his acceleration. He's got to hold on for a lap now. We know that he can race in a controlled manner. We know he's versatile. He has that kick at the end, but he's going to be challenged here. Van Loon is trying to come round. Richardson, you can just see, though, holding on, looks in control, and he will be in control all the way. I was never really in doubt. Never in doubt at all for our defending champion there, Matt Richardson, making it look really very straightforward i think he was you know on paper when you look at some of the some of the draws for these heats um we have got some big names uh, coming up later on of course harry lefraisen is in our final heat but i think looking at this lineup matt richardson was the rider you would immediately highlight and say he is looking like the clear favorite for this heat it is brand new green and gold of australia and matthew richardson He's put down the DIY tools now for the serious part of the season. He's been busy building camper vans and everything back home. But here he is in Europe. He's winning. He's doing what he does best. A track cycling superstar here at the UCI Track Champions League. And talking superstars, yes, the competition's back as well. Harry Lavresen will be along in a minute. Superstar name coming up next. Ronaldo Singh. Yes, he was named after that Ronaldo, the original one. Ronaldo Nazario, the Brazilian striker. He's up against John Spies. Ronaldo is from India. And the third member of those sprinting here, looking for a place in the semis, the very experienced Mateusz Rudjuk. Ronaldo's an interesting young rider, not just because of the name. He's a real character and a part of an ever-growing, strong Indian track sprint lineup. Ronaldo Singh Light on Jam. All looking across at each other. No chance to just eyeball the one competitor here. You've got to look at two. Palma Arena, by the way, here in the Balearic capital, is starting to fill up. Holds around 8,000 on a day. Slightly less capacity today with all the wonderful lights and screens and everything we have in the arena. It's a very sunny afternoon. You can see the light shining in there. Earlier start this year as well, so slightly different atmosphere on track than normal. But a real good buzz about the place already, as we've two laps to go in heat five of six for the men's sprint competition. One and a half laps now, and it's Ronaldo at the front who's starting to build up the pace. 
The Indian is there with the pole, Rujak on his wheel. Spies is the South African at the back in the green. Rujak trying to use his experience and pace to get around. Gets that wheel in front, gets the whole bike in front now, comes into the home straight, and he's going to win that one of the canter. Mateus Rujak is into the semi-finals. Yeah, really clear, convincing that win there for Rudrick. Does not look under any pressure at all and just timed it perfectly. Let, let Ronaldo Singh of India do that sort of lead out for him and, and not be hitting the wind early on. You can just see the onboard camera uh, looking behind at Jean Spies here of South Africa. If you just see Rudrick come round and you can see like daylight there. Nice clear win. The semi-final lineup is taking shape, and there is just one spot left up for grabs. There's confirmation that it will be Mateusz Rudzik who moves into the next round. He will face Matthew Richardson. Will he also face the world champion? We're about to find out. Because Harry Lavresen arrives on the Palma track that's given him so much over the last couple of years. He's up against Melvin Landerneau of France. And from Chinese Taipei, it's Xie Nian Singh who's also taking him on. Landerneau will be wearing the dark blue jersey with the white and red sleeves. And Xie with the white jersey on. And those colours of Chinese Taipei. But it's the rainbow jersey we're looking at here. The world sprint champion, Harry Lavresen of Netherlands. There is Melvin Londerno. A big year for anybody who is representing France in professional sport. The Olympic Games take place in Paris next year. And here is Sier. Now, this is a funny position for Lorne Darnot and Sier. Mm. Because there is pressure, but there isn't pressure because they're up against the very best. Yeah, the, the pressure is on this man's shoulders. Harry Lovrazen is there with the rainbow stripes on. He's officially the best in the world. He's the Olympic champion as well. Whenever he gets on his bike, people expect him to win, and they expect him to win easily. So I think if you're up against him, it's like, well, I may as well try something different. You know, I may as well try a different tactic, try a different gear, whatever, because the, the pressure is really on his shoulders, and he does respond supremely well to that sort of pressure, just by, you know, how many world titles he's been able to win in his career. But at the moment, a little bit of a gap opening up now. This is Xie of Chinese Taipei. He's gone for his tactic, non is gambling the other way around. He's waiting on the wheel of Labrias and making the world champ do all the work to close this up. The bell's rung and she is still out there. But is he tiring? Oh, yes, he is. Because look at the pace. Here's the man in the rainbow jersey. That's why he's wearing it. He wins by a country mile. And Harry Labresen makes very short work of his opponents and moves into tonight's second of two semi finals. Well, he made that look easy, didn't he? Yeah, and, and, that, and that's what we'd expect. You're just seeing on the screen here the, the last 200 meters of the race that we always time that in, in a sprint competition just to be able to compare to other heats. So a 10 ones from an average of 71 kilometers an hour for the final 200 meters. So that the, the 200 meter line is just past the finish line. And it's always interesting to analyze that compared to other races. But yeah, 71 K an hour for that final 200. And that's him looking over his shoulder and easing up over the line. The Mallorcan word for rapid is exactly the same. Rapid, that's what it was. And Harry Lavresen. Those Dutch colours on the graphic there, but the world champion in the individual sprint. And uh, Lorient Jeunesse, the other Canadian competitor. First of the six heats is coming up there. It's the women's sprint first round here on night one of the UCI Track Champions League. And this is our draw. You can see Thomas Mitchell Walsh, our first of six heats. All the Walsh of Ireland in the green. Olympic champion, 
Kelsey Mitchell is there in the blue. And up against them, it's Lowry Thomas from Great Britain. And you'd have to say, it's rather like the last of the men's seats we had this. One clear favourite, but of course, that brings a bit of pressure for the favourite, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, you know, whenever you're an Olympic champion, that, that stays with you for the rest of your life. But certainly whenever you get on a bike to, to race a bike race, you're always announced as an Olympic champion. As we're doing here, we're, we're talking about her, and that comes with so much added pressure. And I think Kelsey Mitchell has really sort of taken that in her stride, and she's somebody that just seems to really enjoy racing her bike, enjoys traveling around the world, coming to events like this, playing up to the crowd. But yeah, she is the clear favorite out of these three. And as you say, that comes with pressure. I love that she's got the gold bike. I'm, I'm so here for that. She's the rider in the middle at the moment. You can just see Larry Thomas in front of her, just looking over her shoulder, trying to look to see where she is. Kelsey just winding it up now. She's the one that's having to do the looking around here. Decides that she'll just take it up at the front with one and a half laps to go. No messing around. Does not want to get caught out tactically. She'll have to keep her speed. Thomas, though, is trying to get in the slipstream. Walsh still sits at the back in the green jersey. Thomas starts to get a little bit closer as they come into the back straight. But Mitchell, the Olympic champion, is holding on. It looks like she has this under control. She certainly does. And she'll move into the night semi-finals. Yeah, very nicely done. Not quite the daylight that we saw from Harry Lovraisen uh, at the end of his heat. But as you say, the clear favourite coming into this and the clear winner at the end there. Interesting, she made that tactical decision fairly early on, it seemed there, Joe. Just didn't want to get involved, sort of in the middle, looking around, and that worry where you get called out, you maybe give yourself too much to do or make that mistake. Yeah, I think if you're on the front, you're, you're sort of riding your own race, you're winding it up, you know what you've got on your legs. You can look over your shoulder to, to try and see where your opponents are, but you've not got to try and look forwards and back at the same time, if you see what I mean. Whereas if you're in the middle, you, you don't know who to keep your eyes on. If you're at the back... You can see everybody, but it's a long way to go. So if, if you've got the legs to lead it out, it does seem to be the best tactic in these three up sprints. We move on. Now, Miriam Vece is the experienced rider in here. But there's plenty of talent on your screen now. 22-year-old Alessa Catriona Prübster. Part of the German team sprint lineup that won the Euros in Switzerland this year. And of course, we know that down the years it's been a production line of talent coming from Germany. There is Miriam Wehrchip. Spent a lot of time training in Switzerland, the World Cycling Centre. And from the Netherlands, it's a BMX return track sprinter by the name of Ruby Hersman. She was a junior world champion on the BMX all the way back in 2016 but this is okay it's explosive power but a lot more explosive power here mm, there is a surprising amount of crossover between bmx and track sprinting it does seem to be relative i wouldn't quite say common but it's, it's not unheard of um i mean also another one is speed skating and track cycling there seems to be a bit of crossover especially in the netherlands um but yeah i, I know of a few riders that have come from a bmx background it's definitely like you say very explosive um different sort of skill set to riding on the track about riding on the bmx but it is always fascinating to see when Radis have sort of made that transition and just despite, you know, winning a world title, as you say, as a junior, uh, and now competing on the track. Harrisman just sitting on the wheel of Probster now as Vece in the blue jersey, the Azzurro of Italy, sits third wheel. One and a quarter laps to the conclusion of this third of six heats in the semis. It's close to the German who's desperately trying to get over that gear and put the power through the pedals. She's at the front now in the white jersey. Halfway through the back straight with now turn three upon them. Flying through the final turn. It's Pupster still out there and she will win that really without a contest. Yeah, very clear when they're for props. And that, that was a harder heat to call. Like on paper, when you think about the different strengths of different riders, the different levels of experience, um, that was a sort of tougher one, not quite as clear as the first heat, but tactically really strong there, as we've been talking about, leading it out, not worrying about what's going on behind her, pacing it herself, and just nice, nice gap at the line there over Vecce. 
Yep, Miriam Veitch here, the most experienced there, but Probster, we know that she's gifted. Certainly, if you want to be a part of that German team sprint lineup, you have to pull your weight, you have to do your thing. And Well, we've got decision pending on the screen now. Tends to mean that there's a bit of VAR action going on. They're having a look at this on the video. Any idea what they might be looking for? I mean, I didn't see anything, but the sort of things you can look for is once the sprint has unfolded in that final lap, uh, if you look at the lines on the track, the, you've got the black line and the red line. If you're if you're below the red line, you're not allowed to flick out and go above the red line. Uh, similarly, if you are above it, you're not allowed to go down and into it. That's called the sprinter's lane. So that's something that we often look at if anybody is deviating from their line in the final sprint. And if that then affects the result of the race, um, that's probably the, the, the first thing that you'd look at. But no, we've got a winner confirmed there as Propster. Propster then is through. Vich is second. Hersman almost half a second down, finishing in third. That's the first bit of our first semi final sorted. One place left, three athletes to fight for it. Three athletes on your screen already, lined up and set to go, starting with Wang Lijuan from China. Wang Lijuan, coached by Denis Dmitriev, very famous bike rider indeed. There is Lorient Jeunesse from Canada. And here is Marta Bayona, who enjoyed quite the success last year, wearing the leader's jersey after one of the rounds as well. She knows how to win races in the UCI Track Champions League. And very consistent as well across Sprint and Kieran. One of those riders that you, you sort of consistently look at on the start list as this is somebody to watch out for. And as you said, very experienced at Track Champions League. Been in that leader's jersey, know what it, knows what it feels like to be in that position. It's a different rhythm of racing, isn't it, the Champions League? And it will suit some athletes, and other athletes might not like it as much as the more slower-paced, methodical approach to, like, a Nations Cup or a World Championships. Well, contrast to the World Championships, the women's sprint competition took place over three full days of racing. So you had three different days you had to come in the track to go through that more routine in order to race for the gold medal at the end. Whereas here we've got a sprint and a Kieran crammed into one evening of racing. So all about... Uh, the crowd enjoying it, the TV viewers, everything else, and I think the riders just enjoy something different, you know, a different sort of format, and, and they're able to enjoy that as well. Wang from China at the front, Junyest trying to come around now. There's a hole for Bayona to get through. If she has the pace, she starts to make her move, but she's still going to get round Wang from China. Bayona trying to get there. Has she got the pace? She makes a move. She does have the pace. Marta Bayona, Colombia, is into that first very strong-looking semi-final. I think that was one of the tightest finish we've seen. That and the, the crowd really loved that. You could you could hear the, the sort of the, the gasp and the woo as, as they watched um, the riders go over the line there. But the experience of Bayona really paying off here. You can just see her finding her way through that gap, which almost didn't seem to be there just a few moments ago. 62 and a half kilometers an hour is the average speed of the final 200 meters of racing, 11.5 seconds. You can just see them here coming out of turn four into that home straight. Bayona using the full straight here just to lunge the line. And it's a clear absolute wheel length there at the end, actually. Yeah, it took the jersey off of Sanna Brasvenix during round two last year in Germany. Last year in the Kirin, won two out of the five races. And as you say, here in the sprint, knows what she's doing as well. And already being into the semi-finals, you've guaranteed yourself a certain element of consistency. And yeah. even if you got the semis, you've picked up points already in the league. Yeah, exactly. And those points will add up towards the final standings um, when we come to the last run in London. So uh, just that, that real difference um, could, be, could be crucial. We're seeing Emma Fanukan here on the screen in the rainbow jerseys, the reigning uh, women's sprint world champion. Am I right in saying I think it's the first time she can wear the rainbow bands, isn't it? Yeah, I think this will be her first time competing in them. She might have been training in them, I don't know. I hope so. Um, I mean, you've I... got to take advantage of it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, go <laughs> fully commit, if you can. Yeah, so she won that title in August, uh, Home World Championships in Glasgow, a year out from the Olympic Games. So really exciting young rider is Emma Fanuka. But she's part of an incredibly strong British setup. Sophie Capewell here we're seeing on our screen is also part of that team. 
two British riders in this heat because smiling away to the cameras there before she gets serious. It's the very experienced Katie Marchant. And up against them, powerhouse sprinter from Belgium, Nikki de Grendeler, who knows what it's like to win big races. She's had those rainbow bands, albeit in the Kieran competition. Good heat, this. This is a very good heat. Sophie Clifford was on incredible form at the, at the most recent World Championships. Uh, Katie Marchant, an Olympic medalist herself from Rio, and as you said, Nikki de Gendela, a previous world champion in the Kieran competition. Yeah, I don't know how to call this one. This could be really exciting heat here, Rob. On board here with Marchant, 30 year old from Leeds in Yorkshire, Northern England. De Gendela is from Flanders in Belgium. And you can see Kate well behind, looking for a bit more joy than the last time she was on these boards in Spain, because last year at this point, she had to withdraw from the whole series due to a muscle tear. And here we go. The fun starts now. And it is Kate Well who decides to go to the front with one and a quarter laps to go. You can hear that bell ringing. The number one is on the board. 250 metres to the conclusion. A reminder that only one goes through here. It's the Grendel at the back, Marchant in the middle. Kate Well just keeping that position at the front. And nobody's able to touch her at the moment. Can they even lay a finger on her as she comes into the final straight? Marchant gets close, but not close enough. It's Sophie Kate Well, who's into the next round. Yeah, really strong race there from Sophie Kate. Well, leading it out early on, looking super powerful, super in control, uh, and, you know, not afraid of the reputations around her. Of course, she's going to know Katie Marshall really well. She's going to be used to training with her. But you can see just a couple of looks over the shoulder there from Kate Well, just sort of seeing what gap she's got. And look at those stats, wow. 1,440 watts. Most of us can only dream of those yes. numbers, Joe. Oh, God, yeah. And, and at that <laughs> cadence as well, at 124 RPM, that's an incredibly fast cadence. So normally, if you if you know, most riders try to put out a high power output, wouldn't be able to do that at those sort of cadences. Sophie Capewell with a class performance, and she moves into the night semi-final. This is the start of the lineup. Next to join them, Alice Andrews, Ala Bileska, or Miguel Lendl. Lendl is from Lithuania. She'll be wearing the yellow. This here is Andrews, and about to make her way to the start line from Ukraine. A very talented young rider in the shape of Ala Biletska, just 20 years of age. She made a move last month, actually, to the UCI World Cycling Centre in Switzerland. Ever since the Russian invasion of Ukraine, she'd been training in Lithuania. So she will know one of her opponents well, Mingle Lendl, who is from Lithuania, at the bottom here of your picture. Elise Andrews, 23 years of age, from Christchurch, New Zealand, the world Kieran champion. Another really close heat. The women's sprint lineup this year is mightily strong. It's a watchful start here. Joe Rousel has just made her way down to track centre for a moment to have a word to the cameras. She'll be back for the start of the endurance competition that's coming up in the next 15 minutes or so. We have two more sprint heats to bring you. Now one and a bit here. One lap down and it's still remaining watchful. Well, Lendl's decided that she wants to get the game going and Andrews has a lot of work to do. This is a good lead for Lendl now. A lot of work for everybody else to do. And Miguel Lendl with 200 metres to the line, but starts to tire. Look at Andrews go. And the pace from the Kiwi is incredible. She should ride away in a glory here. And Elise Andrews, welcome to the UCI Track Champions League. What a debut.
and we'll see her later on as well in the rainbow bands let's not forget Elise Andrews then, on her Champions League debut, is through the semi-final of the sprint competition. Oh, we have quite a line up developing, don't we? He knows already he's going to be facing his big rival, Matthew Richardson, in tonight's semi-final. Smile already at that. But here we've got Capewell and Andrews to meet. Who is there to join them? Now, I can tell you that there is no Daniela Gagiola tonight. She's over in Chile at the Pan Am Games. So she's going to have to play catch-up when she goes back. So it's a British derby to start. And Ellie Stone on the right-hand side there must face the world champion, Emma Fanukan, the 20-year-old from Carmarthen in Wales. The third Britain, second Welsh woman to win that title. This is an interesting start for her because Ellie Stone will know her well. Bit of added pressure with it being another compatriot, a domestic rider. This is a battle that will have happened both in training and competition. Here they are on the world stage in the Champions League. And of course, Finucan with the World Championship stripes on her back. Of course, no Mathilde Gros this year, the former world champ. Olympics on the horizon and a very important year for France, given it's a home Olympics. Now, this is a different sprint in itself, just by virtue of the fact that it's rider against rider. And already, because there's only one other rider to watch, we come to track stands almost. There's that look at each other. Finucan has the position she wants. Can Stone get her to come through? There's a little try, but nothing doing there. The attempt to try and force the move fails. Kelly Stone, a top Scottish sprinter. She's been a national Kieran champion as well. Been a pilot too in Commonwealth Games for the great Eileen McGlynn. More medals than any of us can dream of. One and a half laps to go. Stone's gone very high there. And here's the world champ trying to take advantage of that. They're ready to dive down to the baseline. 200 meter line passed. And the acceleration now coming from the pedals. And look at how she sails past her. Finucan's there at the front. She has this. It'll be her win and very easily done. Finucan winning the British Derby. And the world champ is into the Sims. Fanukan then in the rainbow bands, the world champion. Passes her first test at this year's UCI Champions League. And I'm sure it felt very, very good to finally race in those rainbow straps.
Let's have a look at the riders who've qualified and what a lineup that is. Olympic champion Mitchell, world champion Finucan, with Andrews, Capewell, Bayona and Pripster through. Now the six riders fighting it out for the first 20 points of this year's UCI Track Champions League. Category when you've got the, that elimination race where just one little mistake in those first two laps, suddenly you're out the race and that's it. You know, you, you can't contest the finish. So if you are just consistent, even if you're not winning, if you're just consistently sort of getting yourself into the top ten, maybe the top five, picking up those points for the overall. And that's how Claire de Wimhoff took the overall uh, series win last year. I think it was one of the most popular series winners because he's such a friendly rider, real sort of favourite among the other racers here. So really pleased for him to take that. Let's get on the way. We don't waste any time. We don't mess about here at the UCI Track Champions League. It's fast, it's furious, and we're going to tear it up on the track across the next month. This is the start list for the night scratch, led by Tid the World Champ and Sebastian Mora, who's been second in the last two years of racing. Claudio Imhoff there wearing number 69 is the defending Champions League winner. You'll find out after tonight. There was Matthias Buchli, former sprinter, lining up at the back. Yeah, from the Dutch powerhouse of a sprinting, uh, now, now competing in the endurance events and had some good results at last year's league. Obviously very fast, he's still got that sprint to finish. He's not the only one. Quentin Lafarga mm. France is another rider who used to be a sprint based rider. He's now part of the Team Pursuit squad for France. Actually didn't compete at this year's World Championships because he crashed just a couple of days before the racing started. So we had to sit out the World Championships. But Quentin Lafarga, another very fast rider from the sprint background. It's a 20 lap scratch race. Yes, only 5 k's this one. Yeah, so World Championship distance is 60 laps, so a lot shorter, which means we get a lot more aggressive racing. Very fast from the start. There is our World Champion just leading the field at the moment. I've seen it suggested, Joe, that people who've moved over from track sprinting might be more at home in the Champions League because of the shorter events. Mm, yeah, potentially. Uh, you know, as I was saying, the World Championships is scratch versus a 60 lap race, and you know, you get you get groups of riders gaining laps, you get people losing laps sometimes, but this 20 laps, uh, you know, fast and furious and over very quickly we've already had two and a half laps and we've seen the odd little tentative move up the front again there's nothing in terms of full commitment yet but that might be about to change because there we are the defending champion Claudio Imhoff just testing his form he's one of the riders who'd need to probably go out there and win this in a breakaway or try and force a group away so again play the long game here even if you don't win the race pick up plenty of points yeah, if, if you know you're not one of the best sprinters, you need to go on the attack and try and force a breakaway. And then even if you don't win, because perhaps you might be with runners that you know can out-sprint you. So if you're in a championship situation, you'd be thinking, well, I don't want to drag that person to the line. But in the track Champions League, with it being the league, as you're saying, you know, if you, if you guarantee yourself a top three, top five, that gets you so many points on the board, which really helps with the overall standings. He's taken Will Perrot with him of Great Britain. There's another rider coming across as well in a red jersey here. You is Eya Hashimoto from Japan, and it's a good group now that is about to become five riders. The chase on behind with 13 and a half laps to go includes most riders because they do not want to let this go. And also there for Belgium, it's the number 64 Tour Dens, who's had a very busy year on the road. To see Will Perrett there swing up and just slot into fourth wheel. So just leaving a slight gap there. That's Schmidt Bauer of Austria who came across on his own, got himself on the back, and it just 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 let Will Perrett go in front of him so he can skip another sort of half lap of a turn before he hits the front. It's um, fine, completely allowed. This is Mark Stewart trying to get across. One of the gifted rides. He had a really good time of it last year in Palmarit Stewart. He was the early leader of the series, and he's used a very, very big effort there to get across. He's managed to do it, and I'll tell you what, if you've got the legs to do that at this stage, you're not in bad form. Halfway through the race. Yeah, he made that look very straightforward, didn't he? Just came across one big effort to get it over and done quickly. You know you've only got a 20-lap race, you know, you know once you get there, you haven't actually got to hang on for that long. We're now in the final 10 laps. I think psychologically, when you see nine laps on the board there, you think, I could probably hang on for that. So brilliant move there by Mark Stewart. Six riders in the lead as we have one other try to get across here. Eight laps 
laps to go. Two kilometers remain. Trying to get across here is Sebastián Mora. There are six riders up there, and you can hear the Spanish crowd cheering him on every time he goes. He's got the national flag on his back. Comes from just over the water here in Valencia. Two British riders up there, the defending champion Imhoff as well. Denz is in there for Belgium. Hashimoto too. And it looks as though the next group's going to be up the game because six laps to go. They're getting close to taking a lap, if anything. There's the hesitation in the other group. The race win is going to be between seven riders, it seems here, Joe Rousel. Yeah, so the interesting thing here, it doesn't matter if they gain the lap or not. There's no points to be gained like you have in a points race. It is that the, the first over the line is the winner, essentially. So if they're a lap up, great, they're a lap up on everybody else. It could make the sprint more messy if, the, if they catch the runners ahead of them. So you might see them not drive into that gap. Although with four and a half laps to go now, you just, just see on the wide shot, there's not a lot of space for them. I think they're about to make that junction. Just swinging up the track there, no one's keen to get involved in a, in a sprint with all these other riders as well. Rider from the Netherlands has made a move to try and secure eighth place and that's all they can secure here. And indeed, as we're into the final kilometer, it is going to get messy. So remember the seven riders who were there in that group were looking for the first to come across the line. They're all back together. They've taken a lap. But of course, as Joe was saying, this is a scratch race. First across the line is the race winner. This is the closest you can get on the track to a road race where it's just one winner across the front. We keep our eyes open and we have two laps to go now. Leading it out here at the front is Hashimoto, who's one of the riders, remember, who was in that group of seven. Bell rings there as we go into the final lap now. Attacking and making his move is Roy Efting. He wasn't in that original group, so we're looking behind. Denz is trying to come around as well. There's Tidball, who's out the game for the win. You've got several riders in here. It's trying to spot the first across the line. And there we go, number 17 may well be Hashimoto here we're looking at. I have a feeling that Hashimoto might have taken the win there, but we're going to have to check on the replay, Joe, because as you stated, that got very, very messy in the end. Yeah, so our camera's just showing Hashimoto here, and he's just acknowledging the crowd, so I think that was the right call there, Rob. But yeah, very, very tricky, because we had seven riders gain the lap, and they were in amongst all the riders that were a lap down. So the, the, the question was, where was the first of those seven riders? But you nailed it. Never mind the riders, we passed the first <laughs> test there. <laughs> For all of you at home, wherever you're watching, let's say we might have had a nervous look on our face. Eya Hashimoto is the winner of the first event, the men's scratch, and that is a big one because he takes 20 points. Second place, I think, goes to Claudio Imhoff, who's the defending champion. Third place to Sebastian Mora. Then you've got Will Perrett, Mark Stewart, Max Schmidbar, and Turdens. And then Gavin Hoover looks like... He took the rest of the points for those chasing on behind. We will get the classified check on things in just a moment. But there is your winner. Eya Hashimoto of Japan takes the first scratch race. And he moves halfway through the first night. Da Hashimoto, who's launched to the top of the league. And from men's scratch racing, we go to sprint semi-finals. So these are the winners of our sprint heats that we saw, which was our first event of the evening. A three-up sprint. We had six heats. Each winner is three. Mateusz Rudziuk is the first of our three contestants. Tom Derash is here. As is Joe Truman. Poland, France, Great Britain represented. Now, there's no disrespect at East Street, but I think I know which semi-final I'd rather be in, Joe, because you have the two sprint stars of the world in the other. Yeah, in semi-final heat two, we do have Harry Lovrace and Anne Matt Richardson um, up against each other. So our, our first and second overall last year in the same semi-final. So they cannot both progress to the final. But we'll worry about that in, in a few minutes' time. This is semi-final heat one. Rudchik is on the front here. Well, he, he's actually on the second wheel, but he, you can see him in, in your shot from the onboard camera from Tom Derash of France. So he's on the front. Rudchik in second. And Joe Truman is right at the back at the moment. 
Brujic in that red and white jersey of Poland. Looking left, looking right. Truman sits there. And the high of France. Big 12 months for him. Here we go. One and a half laps to go. For those of you who are tuning in to our qualification, this is the exact same drill. Only one can go through. And the bell's rung. 200 meters then to go as they go across that white line. 125, halfway down the back straight. Turn three passes by. There is turn four. De Rache coming through the setter. He has it. And Tom De Rache into the final. What a start in the Champions League for him. That is a huge result for Tom De Rache. They're absolutely timed that to perfection. And yeah, as you say, he is through to the final. He is guaranteed a top two in this sprint competition this evening. He's going to get more points than either Harry Lovrieson yeah. or Matthew Richardson. Yeah, he certainly is. Wow. It is a dream start for Tom de Rache of France. And here are his numbers. I'll tell you what, he got the heart beating. 199 beats per minute, that maximum heart rate. You just see him coming past Joe Truman there. Joe did his same tactic from the previous heat where he led it out early on. It worked well for him that time, but just getting past at the end there. There's our winner into the finals. And a reminder that the placings matter as well for second and third for the yep. points you pick up. So every race matters in the Champions League. Certainly does. There's all important points for the overall standings. Consistency is key. Even if you don't win on the night, pick up those points that all add up towards the end. If you can be there or thereabouts, there's still always next week to take a win. There's the trophy they're playing for. It will stay nice and safe in that case until we get to London. First two years engraved on it. Here's the man who took it home last year. It's Australia's number one star. It's Matthew Richardson. The defending champion in the UCI Champions League. Here to challenge him from the Netherlands, making his Champions League debut this year, it's Lars Romain. Our first Champions League winner two years ago and reigning world champion in this discipline, Harry Lavresen. And Richardson versus Lavresen is developing into the one of the modern rivalries that this sport has seen. It certainly is, and for so many years, Harry Lavresen had it, had it all his own way. He was the runner that everybody predicted to win this competition last year and it was Matt Richardson that surprised not people in the know but surprised some people by being able to take the overall title so you know we love that we have that rivalry really enjoying seeing how that develops but here in the semi-finals they meet Romain is in uh, a bit of a world superstar sandwich here he's right in the center now Richardson comes up in the inside and he's not one to let Lavresen out of his sight. Remind us, somebody has to lose ground here already. Oh, he's gone long. He has gone long. And it is Lavresen who's being forced to do the chasing here by Richardson. One lap to go, and the Romain still has that gap. Are oh, we about to see a big shot? Look at the acceleration, though. They're flying towards him. They zip around him. Turn three, turn four. It's Labresen, Labresen, and Labresen going all the way to the final. Harry Labresen won. Matthew Richardson nil. It certainly is, but they made him work for that. Wow. Gamble there from Richardson, holding the wheel of the race and trying to come round it in the, in at the end. But that's the moment. They pass Lars from the Netherlands. But the race in there, showing why he's on that gold bike with the rainbow stripes. Wow. Lavresen makes it through to the final and he had to bring some big numbers to do so. Breaking the 2,000 watt barrier to put Matthew Richardson away. It's Harry Lavresen, the world champ, who will face off against Tom Derrache for the first of five sprint competitions at this year's Champions League.
that's warmed us up. We are ready to go. Confirmation of what will be the final. France, Netherlands. Derache, Lavresen. Derache, the experience up against the man with more rainbow stripes. Semi-finals time in the women's sprint competition. It's night one, the super launch of the UCI Track Champions League. That's ready to tear it up over five rounds again this season. At our first of two women's sprint semi-finals. Only one can qualify from each group of three. Only two will contest tonight's final. And the 20 points on offer. A chance to be the first league leader. Jerseys will be decided after the opening Kieran competition. And if we've just seen a mighty battle in the men's sprint semi-finals, it's repeated here. In fact, it's better. We have the world champ and the Olympic champ. And there to try and put them off. That's not Sophie Cake. Well, this is. Again, this is tough to call. Cakewell, Finucan, Mitchell. This is a stacked semi-final. As you are saying, Rob, this, these, these are the names that you would expect to be in that final. And if you were highlighting before the start of the race who you think are going to be, going to be in that top two today, you, you'd put all of those three names in it. But they're up against each other in the semi-final. Only one can go through. Wow, this is tough to call. Looking at my watch then, wondering if it was finals time already yeah. with all these big names up here. No, I can promise you, we've still got a couple of hours of banging competition yet to come. So we're on the way. First quarter of a lap ridden with hawkish eyes on each other. There's Kelsey Mitchell, the former soccer player turned Olympic champion on the track, sprinting. The world champion, winning on world's debut, Emma Fanukan. And in a home velodrome as well. Yeah, her world's debut for the individual sprint competition. She had done the team sprint previously and had done the team sprint a couple of nights before as well at the, at the World Championships in Glasgow. But her individual sprint competition and debut and taking the rainbow jersey. First time for Great Britain in 10 years since Becky James won the title in Minsk and before that Victoria Pendleton. So filling a gap there brilliantly. The game is on the way, and it is the Welsh woman who's at the front as the bell rings. Mitchell, the Olympic champ, has a lot of work to do here. She's making her move now, trying to get onto the wheel of Cakewell, but it's Fanukan who is riding away with this, and Emma Fanukan has no competition. Into the final she goes, doing the rainbow bands justice, and the world champ has a real good chance of being the opening lead leader. She certainly does. That was such a dominant ride there. Just taking control, getting to the front, winding it up at her own pace. Kelsey Mitchell in a difficult position there. Does she gamble and wait to see if Sophie Kipple can close the gap and then come round, or does she go for it herself? They both close in on her on the end, but nowhere near enough to take that victory. And it was a clear win there for Emma Fanukan. Carmarthen celebrates again. Emma Fanukan into tonight's final. Who will she face? Potential adversaries on your screen in the bottom left. Delise Andrews. Alessa Catrona Prupste. And Marta Bayona. It's Bayona who's going to be taking this on from the fence. Andrews at the bottom. Krupster will start in the middle. Here is Marta Bayona. So consistent last year. Slightly better in the Kieran. Her results would suggest down the years. But a really good all-rounder. Knows her way around a sprint race. We're getting to know Alessia Catrona Prupsta bit by bit. We heard Christina Vogel saying how good she was. She watches her in the German setup very often. And Elise Andrews 
already a world champion in the Kirin. She got to the line just in front of Marta Bayona in those worlds as well. Did, so yeah. A renewed rivalry here. It certainly is. So, you know, as, as these riders in these competitions, they travel around the world, but often seeing very familiar faces and, you know, rivalries do continue like this. But Eddie Sanders, like you say, came out on top, won the rainbow strikes for the Kieran. So we'll see her in that jersey in the subsequent races this evening. You were telling me it runs in the family as well because... Uh... Daddy Andrews is now the coach, isn't he? Yes, yes, and he was uh, a former competitor himself as well. Um, so he's now coaching the sprint setup in New Zealand. Uh, but also, what's interesting about Alice Andrews, as a junior, she was competing in endurance races. So she was competing a lot in the individual pursuit, which is two kilometres for junior women as opposed to three kilometres at senior level. So as a sprinter, she's a very, we sort of say, like a long sprinter. Mm. So the longer drawn out races really suit her. So you can see her at the moment winding it up on the front. You know, she wants this to be a long, hard sprint. Look at Bayona there going through that gap. Dive down from top to bottom there. The bell's going to ring. Bayona has a bike length and a half here. Now, can she hang on? Pupster is the rider who's getting closer. Going to halfway through the back straight, and Pupster now is half a bike length behind. If she has one more burst of pace, she might not get beyond the Colombian. She certainly can. And that's victory for Pupster, another new German sprint star, into the night's final. That was phenomenal. So what are the runners in this heat? You know, she she was not the biggest name here. She was not the one with, with a rainbow jersey about to be about to be worn later on this evening. But you know, she was not afraid of reputation. She rode her own race. Coming round by Ona here. Take a brilliant victory, and she is through to that sprint semi that sprint final. 63 and a half kilometers per hour. Wow. That was a fast final lap. We saw the moves, didn't they? They were ducking and diving around each other. By Yona proper sort of sprint awareness when she saw the gap open to go through it but it was pure pace here that a full wheel length in the end Alessa Katruna Prupsta into the final to face none other than the world champion it's Prupsta it's Finucan final to come later on while you get ready for the women's scratch race. Good time to meditate and think who exactly will be the sprint stars tonight. A reminder, you saw the QR code, download the official TCL app and get involved. Racing almost ready to restart. We stay with the best women in the world. We go from sprint to endurance. It's time to see scratch racing for the first time. Whistle goes then. There'll be one lap for them to get ready before the gun goes. As we see Katie Archibald on board. This wonderful Velodromi Just Baleares, the Balearic Islands Velodrome, playing host to the first of five big women's scratch races we're going to have throughout this UCI Track Champions League. 18 endurance stars are here, led by Katie Archibald, but there's some fantastic competition. Coles Leister, who's had a very good year on the road. Early hiccup for the change of teams, but she's back, she's racing well. And again... This is the, on paper at least, Joe Rousel, simplest 
of endurance track races. Yes, but as the men's scratch race showed us, it can be complicated, so bear with us. 20 laps of racing, first over the line is the winner, unless anybody gains a lap, and then they're a lap up. So bear with us, and we'll see what happens. Uh, we often see very aggressive racing here at the Track Champions League, with the race being 20 laps compared to the sort of full. Well, for women at the World Championships, it's 40 laps for the scratch race. So half distance compared to World Championship distance, but that tends to make it faster racing, more aggressive racing. So we'll see if we get a similar situation to the men's if we did have that lap gain. Often takes at least a kilometre, doesn't it, to settle down before we get the first moves. And that's what we're seeing here, 750 metres in. And it's one peloton of riders, all 18 in their brand new redesigned jerseys this year. In for a kilometre. Big British presence in this women's endurance lineup. Five riders of the 18 from Great Britain this year. A lot of riders who know each other well. It's not just Archibald. Evans going so well. Khan is here this year as well. Kate Richardson from Great Britain and Sophie Lewis. Yeah, very strong British squad here. So Nia Evans uh, having won a world title in the Madison at the uh, World Championships in Glasgow uh, with Ella Barker. So she's very strong in these sort of races. Previous points race world champion as well. So I think a lot of people have been talking about Katie Archibald coming into this, but Nia Evans has also shown she's particularly strong in these sort of races. First look at Ellen Hesters on the front, an up-and-coming Belgian endurance rider. The brothers competing in the league as well here. They've been having a bit of a family holiday leading up to this. Good weather around in Mallorca, but it's serious stuff now. Competing for Belgium, a cycling mad nation. Probably would say the cycling mad nation in the world. It's a cagey start, though to this race. And everybody's got to think about playing the long game here. If you don't think you can win a scratch race in a certain way, make sure you pick up as many points as you can. But Katie Archibald always looks to pick up points, always likes to go long, and she's done that with 12 laps to go. She certainly has, so you can just see the onboard camera here and you can see Anita Yvonne Stenberg of Norway trying to chase her really hard at the moment. But Katie Archibald, no surprise that she's the first animator of this race. Just swinging up the track and just having a little look who's with her. Yeah, racecraft as well, second to none really in this company, Katie Archibald. She knows when to break up a group, how to do it. Everybody would have had the alarm bells ringing when she went. In the meantime now, two more riders off the front. One, of course, is Lara Gillespie of Ireland. And it looks as though we've Canada in the move as well. Two Canadian competitors here, Coles Leister as well as Van Damme. And this particular rider off the front is Sarah Van Damme. Attempt to close the gap here. So the British riders trying to come across. Both Belgians working together as well. It's Gillespie who's out in front. Archibald, by the way, just in the second group there. And that's the problem as well. Everybody looking at Archibald, she will know that she's not going to do everything. She won't fall into that trap. Yeah, but by Katie pushing in that first attack, that has, you know, sort of launched these flurry of attacks that we're seeing now. It takes somebody to have the guts to be the first person, knowing that that might not work. You know, you might not be let go because everybody's got fresh legs. But once that first attack has gone in, that sort of lets everything else unfold. A gap of around 50 metres for two riders, one of whom is Kate Richardson of Great Britain. And Lily Williams of the United States, I believe, is our other rider. The gap's starting to grow. There's a bit of hesitation behind that. Not long before we get to the final kilometre. Williams at the blue jersey. Richardson in the white. And it's Archibald on the front here. Contributing, but it's not a frenetic chase here. Into the final kilometre, and there's going to be a good opportunity for Williams and Richardson to try and pick up 20 points. Yes, this is a huge opportunity. That hesitation that we're seeing behind, suddenly that gap has grown even more. They've got ooh, about a third of a lap at the moment. You know, we're lucky to be able to see here in the velodrome the sort of gap that they've got, and they're working really well together. We just got two riders. There's nobody trying to take a sneaky sort of rest and, and not do their turn on the front. You can just split the work. Now Archibald will make her move. She's going to go, but it might be to try and take third place here, it seems. Archibald on the attack behind. 
but on the screen you can see the two leaders coming into the final 500 meters. It's Richardson of Great Britain, it's Williams of USA, then Archibald, who's pulling away from the rest. It's a big move, this, from Archibald, and are they tiring out the front? One and a half laps to go now. Williams just doing a bit of a march on Richardson. They need to keep going. Richardson looks to be tiring. It's Williams who's going out for the win. The bell rings. Archibald over there, but there are chasers as well. 42 in the chase is Stenberg of Norway. We know how good she is. It's Lily Williams as Archibald comes up to turn three. Williams is hanging on. Williams looks like she will hang on. She'll take the win. It's a sprint for second, and it's won just about by Kane. Archibald. Stenberg was in there, I think, in third place as well. Victory, though, for Lily Williams of the United States of America. 20 points and an early league lead. That was a brilliant scratch race. I love that. Fair play to Kate Richardson being in that group there with Lily Williams away. Just getting caught on the line there for Kate Richardson. But Lily Williams holding on there for that win. 20 points to her. Our series leader so far this evening. And Lily Williams going deep. 190 beats per minute for that's max heart rate. Richardson, who was out there, just starting to fade, didn't she, in the last couple of laps? And that's what opened the door, really, to the likes of Archibald and Stenberg behind. But it was Williams who held on very, very well. I hope nobody told Tom Darash that stats in the last five minutes. Shh, shh, shh. we'll talk quietly, yeah. shall we? Ignorance is bliss sometimes. Thankfully, there's quite a few thousand people packed into this Velodrome Igis Balears tonight. He won't have heard us. Sorry if you're watching on catch up, Tom. Here he is. His head will be on here. This is a unique opportunity for the experienced Tom Derache. He's been around the block, he knows the score. But he will know, having raced around the world, that he is up against one of the greatest sprinters in history. Yeah, 13 rainbow jerseys for Harry Lovrazen in his career so far. And he's nowhere near done. Nowhere near done at all. Special. Yeah, very special. Got the gold bike in tow as well. He's done it in just about every discipline. Done it the main competition once every four years. Yes, You're competing under the five rings next year again. Those world titles you talked about. Done it at the Euros as well. He's got the Dutch national jerseys too. The winner of the inaugural track Champions League. And a reminder, in these finals, it is just one win you need. We do, and it's also just one-on-one -on -one now. We've not got these three-up sprints that we've had so far this evening. So the heats and the semi-finals were both um, three riders per race. Now it's just one-on-one, -on -one, so it's a far more familiar situation for these riders. Now, is Derash going to try and surprise and shock? It's not easy, given the fact it is one-on-one, -on -one, as Joe was saying. He can't hide and hope he's looking at the other rider here. Lavresen's focus is fully on the Frenchman. It is De Reich who's going to lead it out, but we know that Lavresen doesn't dislike this. If he can get in the slipstream here, put in the power, he will still be favourite. But it's the Frenchman who takes that bell lap. He goes through the 200 metre line as well, but here comes the flying Dutchman, Harry Lavresen, sailing past the competition and the world champion, looking every little bit like it as he takes his first 20-point haul of this year's UCI Track Champions League. That's how you do it. Yeah, and that was just so dominant. Like, fair play to Tom Derash for giving it a go there, but Harry Lebrayson just on another level here this evening. All of that experience, Derash knew he yeah. pulled up the track there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we saw Derash take it on with, oh, about a lap and a half to go. I'm sure we'll see a replay in a bit. We're just acknowledging each other there. Two fantastic competitors.
Well, he didn't own the break that 2,000 watt barrier. He produced his biggest power of the night, 2,117 watts to beat Tom de Rache and take the early lead in the Champions Play and lightning fast. Der Hash beaten Lavresen with the early points hole. So the men's sprint has gone the way of the rainbow bands. I'm pretty sure that Emma Finucan's not wasting her time thinking of omens here. We'll do that for her. She'll be hoping though and her fans watching that it's also going to follow the rainbow here in the women's final. There's Hardy Lavares and then the winner of our men's sprint competition at the Super Launch, round one in Mallorca. 20 points for Lavares and 17 for De Raj. And look at that, 11 points from Matthew Richardson. If we're looking at that duel, it's a nine-point lead already for Hardy Lavares. Every race counts here in the UCI Track Champions League and a nine-point lead already in the early league standings. I know they always say don't look at the league table after the first match, but Harry Lopresson will be. And whoever wins this women's sprint, both competitors will do as well because someone's going to take 20, someone's going to take 17. It's a good start for both here. And this is a repeat now. At the under-23 European Championship final from earlier this year, before things got rather better for the contender on your screen. She was beaten in the under-23 Euros, but she turned up in the seniors, and Emma Fanuken won the world title. She's got the rainbow bands. She's the best in the world. Now she wants revenge over Alessa Catriona Prupster, who beat her to that European title in the youth category. So sprinters of the present, sprinters of the future, facing up against each other at the UCI Track Champions League. Great Britain, Germany. Finuken Prupster. Three laps, rider against rider, and a chance to take the lead in the league. Start Kieran racing to come tonight. But the world champion in this discipline, it will be desperate to make her mark here. Well, she certainly will. It's, it's gone so well so far, and it's such a change from where she was at this time last year. She's had such a, such a stellar season, really rapid rise to the top. And I think also she really believes in herself now. That's the, that's the key, mm. having that level of confidence. But back to one on one, the sprint here for the final. Approaching one and a half laps to go, and Finuka just going higher on the track here. Looks around, gets the view, can now dive down. Pick up the speed as she does going into the bell lap. But it's Pupster who has the lead. She has three bike lengths right now. Turns into two and a half. Make that two, but there's only half a lap to go. And it's Pupster who's still ahead. Finuka has it all to do, coming into the final straight. It's Pupster going all the way. Oh, and she's done it again. Germany with another sprint star. She's beaten the world champion. And the early league leader is Alessa Katriona Prupster. The first shock of the night. 
it certainly is the first shock of the night, but for those in the know, as, we, as you were saying, hearing from Christina Vogel earlier, just how talented this young German woman is. Uh, and, and, you know, what a race that was, really taking it to the world champion, not afraid of reputations whatsoever, not worrying about those rainbow stripes on display in Emma Fanukan. She's taken that one, 63.1 kilometers an hour for that final 200 meters. Absolutely rapid to 20 points. Of course, there's another job to do in the Kieran to take the leader's jersey from night one. We'll have our first look at the league table in a minute. And it's the world champion who's going to be sitting in second place in a repeat of that under-23 duel at the Euros in the summer. It's Pupster who wins. Oh, and look at what it meant to her. There's the winner. And it is a production line of super sprint talent coming from the top sprint nation in the world, Germany. Thankfully, the repairs are completed. The lights can dim away again and we can get back to racing. It's the men's Kieran first round. And this is the first heat. Three heats, two from each to qualify, and one final. Londarno, Lendl, Rudjuk, Dakin, Romain, and Lavresen in heat one. A reminder, two go through to the final. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you finish first or second, as long as you're inside that top two with the three heats. So we'll have six riders through to the final, which will be our second to last event of the evening. And a reminder, we know that the Kieran in general has been getting shorter and shorter yeah. in all sorts of competitions, but it is even shorter in the Champions League, isn't it? Five laps, just 1.25 kilometres. Yeah, so World Champs distance is currently six laps. Previously was, was eight laps a few years ago. So, yeah, the, the event has been getting shorter. The runners are taken up to speed by, by a derny or an electric derny, and uh, then sort of the racing is unleashed. Uh, so there's a bit less time to get yourself up to speed when you've got a shorter race. Matthias Rudjuk is being presented to the crowd, as is Vasilius Lendl. The inaugural Champions League. We did have a round, didn't we, in Panavesis? Here's Monsieur Londelno. He'll be at home next week in Paris. Or two weeks in Paris, I should say. Next week we go to the German capital, Berlin. Racing returns and it's men's sprinting. Cross your fingers, touch wood. There we go. There's a whistle and we're off. So five laps, racing resumes. And thankfully on the super launch night, the rockets are firing again. That is sitting behind the Derny. Gradually increasing their speed here until the Derny will peel off for the final assault to the line. 1K to go. It's Londelno there. Lendelon is well in the yellow. Rudjuk there in third place. And now we've got movement. Sam Dakin decides to get things moving from the front and he wants a quick, very quick race here. Not waiting at all. Dakin is moved there with half a lap to go. Lendl now. Yellow jersey on the side to really put the pressure on the pedals with two laps to go. The two Dutchmen who are at the back now. Labresen and Romain. Labresen trying to make his move. One lap to go, and Lendl is there. Lavresen coming around the outside. A reminder that it's the top two who go into tonight's final. It's Harry Lavresen who's hit the front. Dakin trying to get in front, but Lendl is holding here. Vasilius Lendl holding. Dakin trying to get round. It's Lavresen. It's Lendl. Oh, Londelno was coming close, but I think Lendl has it, you know, for second place. No doubt, though, that Harry Lavresen has qualified. And we wait to find out. And there's your answer, Vasilius Lendl. He took that up really early, and it turned out to be a good tactic. 
Yeah, he did, and he, you know, like we were saying, you just need to be in that top two. It doesn't matter if you don't end up winning. But he took it on, and you can just see him hanging on here. The camera's on the back of the race, and so he's the, our clear winner as he comes around the outside. Just seeing some stats from the race, and 187 beats per, me beats per minute heart rate. I think he was ever so slightly within himself there. Felt like it, didn't it? Certainly with the numbers suggesting that. He did more than enough. And again, that's part of the game. When you know you're going to be in the final every night, it's going to take place over a month, you need to try and know when to put on the power. Lavrecian does. Lavrecian did. And he's into the final tonight. He's having a very, very good start to try and take back the Champions League title he lost last year. Who's going to join them? This is a big one already, isn't it, you feel, for Matthew Richardson? And the giant figure of Mikhail Yakovlev. Six riders fighting for two positions. Yakovlev against Iso, the man from the Andaman Islands in India. He's ready to go. He's up against Xie Nian Sing from Chinese Taipei. Game face on. Tom De Reich has had a very good start to the night. It's a big year for French bike riders. Here's Matthew Richardson. All the way from Australia, last year's Champions League winner. And Dan Kohl, the rider we were just talking about, a 22-year-old from Zevenova in the Netherlands. Same drill. I think the Derny's all ready to go. Might not have to do extra laps this time. Let's hope not. Here they are. Look who's here to help. There's Albert Torres giving his mate Sebastian Mora a good hand there to try and get everything sorted. Torres will be hoping to compete at the Olympic Games with Mora again next year in the Madison. Torres on his off season after re signing for Team Movistar for another year in the professional ranks on the road. From the endurance back to the sprinters here. First lap and a bit without incident. Of course, the rules are to be followed, they shouldn't be. Everybody needs to stay where they are. So you can see Matt Richardson leaving quite a bit of a gap there. He's leaving himself sort of space to sprint into. Just keep him looking over his shoulder. Two and a half laps to go. Call it is at the front. Richardson still looking around and waiting to put down that power. Yakovlev is making the big move from the back again without going full gas yet. Coming to one and a half laps to go as they continue to wind up and get over those giant dinner plate gears. They're all pedaling. It's Call who's still at the front. The bell now rings. Richardson is there. Richardson now makes his move and with ease he takes it up at the front. It's Richardson versus the world here. He'll win this easily. The question is who joins him in the next round? And it's Tom de Rache from France, who's also into the night's final. He is having a very, very good opening night, the Frenchman. But good news for Richardson. No further ground lost on his big rival from the Netherlands, Harry Lavreyesen. And he is into tonight's Kieran final. As is Tom de Rache, started the night with a little crash. You can just see a little bit of a hole in the, in the arm of the skin suit there. But he's been racing well ever since. Just seeing the stats from the last 200 metres there. 10.007, nearly 72 kilometres an hour. That's incredibly fast. He flew there. And again, was in control all the way, was Richardson. You spotted him very early looking around, 
waiting until that moment that he had to make his move and despite not being at the front you always felt that he was the man who was the puppeteer there he was controlling everyone in the race yeah it could take a little bit of patience in a Kieran because the Derny swings off with three laps to go which is an awfully long way to sprint for if you go full gas from that point and if you have got if you have drawn a position higher up the, the field the string of riders it is tempting to want to hold that position but you could just see him laying off letting some gaps open up and then took it on nicely there happy with that victory and that's good to see. We want uh, Matthew Richardson, yeah. like we saw him last year, didn't we, competing for the very camp. A reminder, two to go through. Quintero had plenty of success here last year. She beat Matthew Richardson in the Chris Hoy Arena in Glasgow to the world title. Richardson's already in the final. Quintero, knowing that he's going away next week to the Pan Am Games, needs to bag big points here. Everybody getting into order. A reminder, if you're watching for the first time, as many of you know, I know do, getting in and discovering track cycling through the UCI Track Champions League. These positions are drawn before the race. You cannot move until the Derny disappears. Of course, in these shorter races, it's just two laps for the Derny to get them up to speed. Yep, so five lap race. Derny does two laps on the front with the riders in the string behind. You can just see them moving up here already, so they must not go past the Derny before they go over the line. So now the racing is underway. You have to time those moves perfectly, don't you? As you can see, Saunders, who wanted that tyre pressure sorting, and he's at the front and black. Now Speed's coming around. He knows he's been around long enough that he's not one of the favourites here, trying to make the move. Von Lorne is there as well. Tame and Von Lorne in the orange are really going for it here. Look at the gap he's opening up. Speed's trying to ride into the gap. World champion Quintero's coming around. The bell rings. Quintero needs to make sure he's in the top two here to qualify for the final. And he's doing that beautifully right now. Honoring the rainbow bands. Putting the rest to shame. The gap opens up. And Kevin Quintero showing that he means business. It's Quintero on a whole different level. He was miles ahead at the end there, and I didn't quite catch who was second. It might have been Joe Schumer on the line. It was very, very close to that second position. We'll see. Timing equipment says Tame and Von Lorne. Oh, there we go. Confirmation on the screen graphics as well. I spoke too soon there. Joe Truman in third position, we're seeing. So, Kevin Quintero has won that race by seven tenths of a second. You don't see gaps like that in in sprint racing at the best of times, let alone in the Kieran, which is often really tight at the end. You know, I'm, giving the, I'm going to give him the full gap here because it's even more impressive. It's 100 shy of three quarters of a second. 0.74 seconds for Kevin Quintero ahead of Tim and Van Loon, and then three hundredths for Van Loon over Truman. Truman just missing out, and Tim and Van Loon making tonight's final. Kevin Santiago Quintero Chavarro is through alongside Kevin Van Loon. This is the lineup for tonight's final on the men's Kieran. In time as well. Coming at you very quickly indeed. Time, this time full delay, I should say. There's the whistle. They'll certainly deserve their uh, relaxing hour or so when they get back to the hotel tonight and take a deep breath. It's been a very, very difficult night in charge of everything here, but we're good to go. Looks as though everybody likes everybody together. Will we need another lap. One more lap yet. Not everybody's together yet. You cannot start the race, Joe, without there being a complete peloton, that's the rule. Yes, yeah, so this is officially a neutral lap, as you can see that they're, they're racing very fast, so there's, there's no rule about how, how slow or fast you have to go on the neutral lap, but you do have to have the entire bunch together, so just seeing, I think that's Gavin Hoover trying to get back on, and there we go, that is fired. The inaugural champion, well, Hoover has to start this race, having put a mighty turn in just to get back onto yeah, the route there. Yeah very tough it's always a brutal race and we talk about you know how technically you have to be very good and be able to go for that through those gaps but i think a lot of people forget just just how fast the race is run from the start right fingers crossed everybody because the bell's gone again it's elimination time 
Hold on the ass. Half a lap to go. Ride is moving up on the outside. If you've got the speed and the room, you can do that. Keep your eyes on those boxed in at the bottom, and I think it might well be. Now, is that Hoover or is that 66 down the bottom there? It is Hoover who goes first. So Gavin Hoover paying for that early effort. Gavin Hoover has been eliminated. He's still in the peloton for now, though. Now then, he has realised. Here's his name. It's hard, isn't it? All of that getting ready for everything to go again. Eyes on the back there. That was a tough one to call. Looks like it might be Buchli. Whoever's gone, not happy with it. Roy Efting, in fact. Roy Efting has gone. Keep your eyes on the back again. Time to move up if you can. Oh, not easy. Shake of the head. Off you pop. Not much resistance there from the number 57, who is Max Schmidbar, one of the riders who went down. Of a fight then for the first three elimination moments. Hey. Just keeping an eye on Mark Stewart seems to be okay in the bunch actually on the on the on his new bike. We've got Bill Perrick trying to come round. It's the other thing, isn't it? As well as all the nerves, the mechanical moments and everything like that. It's how you're affected by the crash, how you're moving. There's an issue here at the bottom, and again it's gonna be another Dutch rider to go. This time it is Matthias Buckley. And this should be one of the races where, if he can use that sprint of his, could be good at. But very different racing in a bunch, isn't it? Yeah, and I think when it's run off like in, at such fast speeds from the start as well, that can really almost neutralise some of those some of those runners with that sort of speed. They need it to get down to a smaller group. The pace often gets slower as the race goes on when you've got less riders up on the track, less riders adjusting for position. Tobias Hansen is the rider in the red at the back there, but keep your eye right at the bottom of the track because there's nowhere to move up even if you've got the pace now. And I think there might have been an issue there, maybe for Stewart. Ah, yes. It is Mark Stewart, despite looking all right, who's gone. Held on for a few laps, he's going to pick up points, but that's a blow to Mark Stewart. Yeah, but fair play to him getting up there on a bike he's not used to racing on. Mm. Reminder, his partner's bike, a little small. Again, I think there's about 10, 11 centimetres difference according to the official yeah. measurements that we have. Keep your eye at the back, it's strung out, this one. It's a big effort to get up there from rider number seven to use, Hashimoto, and he's done a great job because he's eliminated Hansen there. And Hansen, well, it's like that very famous Walter Boy song, isn't it? We're seeing rather a lot at the back there. Belgian riders as well as some of the Canadians in trouble here but look down the bottom of the track there is the defending champion in trouble and there he goes Claudio Imhoff the Champions League winner last year has been eliminated shock surprises all coming at once here yeah he was very in control earlier in this race just just sort of holding that pace in the front so all it takes is a couple of people to come round you suddenly you're boxing and then you've got nowhere to go Another acceleration at the front. This is being ridden at a fast, fast pace, this. Full gas stop. Problems here for Will Perrett, who's at the back. Does he have the pace to get around? I'm not sure he does, you know. Goodbye, Will Perrett, despite that very late move. Will Perrett is out. Of course, he won a scratch, didn't he, on the London boards at the end of last season. Out the elimination here. And now if you survive this long, you're getting halfway and you're going to start picking up points in the league. 66 here at the back is Gimet. Oh, the leader's jersey took it to, to Berlin last year. Oh, he's going to struggle here, I think. Big fight at the back. Did he manage to just get in front of the man? No. Nope. Matthias Gimet of Canada is eliminated. Halfway through, down at eight. Back seven. I knew my maths would fail me in the end, Joe. It's only night one, dear in me. The bit should work to do here. 
but he's come around the outside and it's going to be at the bottom of the track. Yeah, and it's going to be 64 Tourdens of Belgium who should be saying goodbye. There's a lot of riding on the road for uh, Sport Flander and Balwaza. Seventh position here. Mora there, just leaning left and right. That was interesting with Hashimoto. The Spaniard looking to rebound. Well, he was one of the riders who was visibly angry, wasn't he, after that crash? Looking at the back here, it's a big effort to make a big sprint, but it's not happening. Another little bit of looking around, gesturing this time from the arm of Philip Hernan, who's eliminated. Wasn't happy with the rider in front of him. It's a five-star group left on the track. Hesperus is having a good race. He's been quiet. We've not mentioned him yet. It's a very good sign in this race. Yeah, people you don't talk about in an elimination race often riding very well, keeping themselves out of trouble. Vivek moving up. Problem for Hashimoto took the bag. He still had a very good night. Now, can he make one more sprint to get there? He can't. Hashimoto took 20 points early on. He's still going to be right up there tonight. Mm. Fifth place. Four riders to remain. And the crowd get excited because Mora, the only Spanish rider in the whole league this year, is still there at the back. Bell rings and the crowd roar at him to move up. But he knows what he has to do. Question is, how the legs? Here he goes. Trying to get around the rider in the turn three. It's not looking easy, this. He's going to have to make a big effort around the side. Mora's trying, Mora's trying. Mora, though, is eliminated fourth place. And then there were three. Applause for Mora and attack off the front. This is where the race starts to change now, Joe. It does. So we've got two uh, scratch race world champions in here. The, the former from last year, the reigning one, Will Tidford, as well. But yours has to um, on the front at the moment. Esther might have to pay, I think, for that particular effort he made a moment ago. He's trying to keep it up as Tibble tries to get around him. Hester's at the back, Hester's is eliminated, and now we focus for the first time in the race on who crosses the line first. Because whoever does that in a lap and a half's time will be the race winner. Hester's in third, it's Tip Ball who's there, and up fighting with him is Dylan Bimmick. Bell rings. Tip Ball to make his move. That scratch world champion. Part of the metal table topping Great British squad in Glasgow, but he's going to lose his place here. Bivik is back and he's going to do it again in the UCI Track Champions League. His opponent applauds. Victory for Canada. High drama tonight, on and off the boards in the elimination race. It's Bivik who finishes at the top. Tip ball in second. It's going to be interesting to see how all of that drama affects the lead table. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the overall standings. I've not done the maths in the last few moments, so I do apologise. I feel like Will Tibble was in the top ten in the scratch race. We can check where Bibich was. Bivic across the line, raising his arms and doing it again in the Champions League. Let's go back to sprinting, shall we? One more endurance race still to come. That will be the women's elimination. First up before we get there, three Kieran heats, this time for the women's sprinters. This is the lineup that comes to Derny. Same no, group looking at the men. This time only five riders in this heat with Gagiola over in Santiago de Chile at the moment. And it is Wong who has drawn that first position. On a wheel, the Grendel of the former world champ. Hard to pick the winners from this, isn't it? It is a tricky one to call. I'm thinking Lauren Jeunet should go well. I'm thinking Nikki de Grendler. Definitely don't discount Katie Marchand. She's been definitely building her form recently. 
Shunis, do you mention she sits fourth wheel there? She's got the black blue jersey on, but with a red helmet and red sleeves. Martin, who you mentioned, the Yorkshire woman, she's at the back. There goes the Derny, and for now, nobody's making a move. Everybody in the place they were drawn in with two and a half laps to go. It's cautious, it's nervy. The speed hasn't really increased since the Derny went. Now it does with the Grendler moving up with two laps to go. Jeunesse moves. And she moves quickly as the bell is about to ring. Opens up a gap. Laurien Jeunesse of Canada. Marchant trying to come into the slipstream as well. She's moved up from the back to fourth. The Grendler holds that second position. Wong is on her wheel. It's going to be a comfortable win for Laurien Jeunesse. And I think it will be Nikki de Grendler who will join her into the night's final. Success for Canada and Belgium. Not too much of a race in the end, that one. No, I mean, she set off at such a high pace so early on that she had that huge gap. No one was able to get on terms with her. The Nikki de Grendel are leading it out for second. You can just see this replay here where she makes her move. Coming around three riders, long way round. Lost the heart rate. 191 was the max that she reached during that effort. Here, completely in control, no one else within the bike length of her. If you're watching in Canada, don't go away. There's lots of success for all of you watching right now. We've seen it with Vivic, and we've just seen it with Jeunesse. She's into tonight's final. And we still have your superstar Olympic sprint champion to come. She's up in heat two here. Jeunesse and the Grendela are through to tonight's final. Six strong athletes now competing for two places to join them. Marta Bayona, Kelsey Mitchell, Orla Walsh, Miklir Lendl, Emma Fanuken, and Lowry Thomas. Here's Larry Thomas, British sprinter, starting to make a name for herself. She's ended on the tunes on a Saturday night, isn't she? Having fun. Her compatriot alongside her, Emma Finucan. Wales well represented here. There is Lendl from Lithuania. There's Walsh from Ireland. Knows this track very well. Though. This is her home track. This is where she trains. Lives about 20 kilometers up the road. Olympic sprint champion, Chelsea Mitchell. Hoping to make it two Canadians in tonight's Kieran final. And Marta Bayona, the 28-year-old, with all the power to put through those pedals. Marta Bayona. Took two of the five Kieran races in last year's league. She'll take some beating here. Here comes the Derny. we go again a reminder that no movement possible until that Derny disappears it's two laps of a Derny here it's a rather short Kieran five laps in total 750 meters without that bike to guide them yeah the idea being the the Derny the electric bike gets the riders up to speed 
So no one has to be in the wind, hitting the wind to get themselves up to speed. And then the racing is unleashed with three laps to go. So riders will normally run a lot bigger gear in a key ring compared to other sprint events because they're not going to have to make sudden accelerations. It's going to be a lot more sort of, uh, I want to say easier up to speed, but it's never going to be quite easy. You can see here a few gaps opening up where riders are just laying off riders in front of them before they make their move. It's a controlled build-up to speed, isn't it, as Lowry Thomas comes to the front. Not too much controlled about that. That was a big acceleration to get the point. With Compatria on her wheel. And of course, it's Emma Fanukan, the world sprint champion. Fanukan looks around. Here's Lendl now coming up to the front. 500 metres to go. Fanukan very aware there of the challenge alongside. It's accelerated, got herself out of that box, and it's Bayona who's just challenging her now. Finucan and Bayona. Mitchell's there as well. Three huge names competing for just two places. Walsh wants to have her say, and she makes her acceleration now in half a lap to go. Finucan is boxed out of the qualification positions now as Bayona hits the front. Marta Bayona all the way. And joining her in tonight's final will be the Olympic sprint champion, Kelsey Mitchell. Marta Bayona yet again in the Kieran. Yeah, such a strong clearing rider and so consistent as well. And consistency really is key throughout this series. Kelsey Mitchell as well, brilliant ride by her. Everyone else, their placings will matter for the overall standings, but we won't see them up again on the track this evening. Delight for the many Colombian fans in tonight in Panama. It's a large Colombian population in the city. And they have been delighted as one of their own shows yet again that she is a Kieran star. Fanukan helped out by Thomas, put to the front, couldn't finish it off. Mitchell with her quality on show as well. Four spots filled, only two to be decided. Qualified for that final then, confirmation. Colombia, Canada by Yona Mitchell. And looking down at the start list for the third and final heat, a big name at least is going to miss out again. It's Stone, Vichy, Capewell, Andrews, Iletska, and Krupster. Krupster, who won the sprint event earlier tonight. Iletska, a really talented young rider from Ukraine who moved to Switzerland last month now at the World Cycling Centre. Miriam Vecha spent a lot of time in her career there as well. Because we all know that Italy historically has had a, a very strong endurance unit. Yeah. Not the same story in, tra in track sprinting. No, so like you say, um, Miriam Vecce had been based at the World Cycling Center in, in Aigle in Switzerland, uh, where they've got a really good setup there with the track and with um, coaching coaches and uh, gym facilities as well. So a lot of, lot of sprinters from nations that aren't traditionally strong in that field base themselves there in order to train. There's Pugster. If the crowd tonight didn't know who she was, they do now. Biletska, the rider we were just talking about. Spent the last 18 months since that Russian invasion of her home country, training in Lithuania. Here's Elise Andrews from New Zealand and the world champion in this discipline. Sophie Capewell, all smiles. Having a much better night in Spain this year than 12 months ago when she had to withdraw from the series. Here is Miriam Virchip. Stone, a top Scottish young sprinter. She has been a national Kieran champion before. Also got some experience racing on the front of a tandem as well. Ellie McGlynn's pilot. Yeah. Ellie McGlynn, an absolute legend of paracycling, by the way. Very few paracycling athletes as decorated as well. Ready to go then. World champion in this heat to all eyes on Elise Andrews, 23 year old from Christchurch, New Zealand. Well, 
Joe Slap done with that dirty. And as Joe was explaining, this is how they just get up to speed. It's a gradual increase by the Derny that paces them. The idea is that they're already at speed. Once the Derny peels off now and it becomes a bunch race. There goes that Derny. There's a few gaps being left here. There are some big gaps there. Sophie Cape are leaving a gap to Vecce in front of her, but Elise Andrews is also leaving that gap. But you can see there with the rush of the acceleration, Pops are there coming around everybody, but Vecce has gone for it. Yep, knows the field she's up against, has the experience. Not the biggest name in sprinted in the world, but she knows how to race. And she's taking a chance. May not work, but she's in esteemed company here. Still ahead as we look to get the bell, but they're coming from behind, aren't they? Here's Andrews. Postrana will. And look at the difference in speed. Vici is passed as if she was standing still. It's the world champion, Andrews. Hoops to there as well. Keep your eye, though, on the young rider Vileczka from Ukraine. But in the end, it's the two biggest names, really, in this discipline that go through. It's the world champion, Andrews, going through with Hoopster, who's having a very solid debut night. Yeah, I think we were perhaps expecting Andrews to go through being the world champion, but perhaps the confidence she would have gained this evening, I was I was fully expecting her to be up there as well, because I think, you know, you can't, you can't buy confidence like that from, from beating, the, beating the world sprint champion. So much is about momentum in professional yeah. sport, isn't it? It doesn't yeah. really matter which sport it is. If you're on a winning streak, yeah. you've got half the battle won. Yeah, they say winning's a habit. That's what you get in that habit. We'll keep it going. She'll be hoping not yeah. to get out of it before she goes to a capital city next week. Both Kieran final lineups are complete. Before we get to the finals, we have one more big bunch race to bring you. And that's going to be the women's elimination coming up in just a moment's time. Before we get there, a chance to show you the final qualification lineup for tonight's Kieran final. So we're all ready to go for the final endurance event of the night. Reminder that it's actually 17 riders to start here with Antonieta Gagiola. Off we go. The gun will go. Or the whistle. We've got problems firing the gun. Everybody together. And we go. What's left in the legs? It's been a longish night. If you're tuning in late tonight, you've missed a lot of drama. Make sure you go back and watch and catch up if you can. Get involved, download our official app. Participate, vote, get to know the riders. The bell is wrong here. And how this works is we're watching the back of the peloton. Each time they go across the finish time, every two laps. It's the last rider across the line each time who will be eliminated until we're left with two. That's a hard, hard one to call. Maybe Ellen Hesters. It is Ellen Hesters. Not a good start for the Fleming. And her night's over just like that. Fast moving as it goes again. Gachiola just on the back. She's just moving up on the inside, the Mexican now. It's been quite the year for Mexican cycling. Isaac Del Toro. Del Toro winning the Tour de Avenir this year. Signing for UAE team Emirates on the road. Here on the track, though, right now, it's number 53 to be eliminated. It was uh, Amalie Vinter also, and that's a surprise there, one of the big names already. The Dane is eliminated. Gillespie there in the green at the back, moving up on the outside. 46 towards the bottom is Maike Bronfacht. This is for the Netherlands. It's the rider at the bottom who's in a bit of trouble here. And it looks as though it is... 
and Donieta Gagiola, who is eliminated. Coming, moving up for New Zealand. It's just across the water, actually, from here in Catalonia. So the bike switched with her partner as well this evening, so a bit of adjustments on the southern bike, I'm sure. And she's going to have to make a move here. I think she does just in time. We'll get confirmation of that. And it is Francesca Selva of Italy who's eliminated. She's not had a very good night at all. She was one of the riders who had a puncture at the end of the scratch race there. Champions League debut, not one to remember for Francesca Selva. Here yeah, we're on board with Archibald, again, we haven't mentioned her yet, so she's been keeping nice and quiet, mainly keeping the pace. She likes to ride these elimination races from the front. Yes, yeah, so often you see riders spend the first half of the race riding at the front, which is going to be harder work because you're hitting the winds, but keeps you safe. And then once the once the peloton, once once the bunch is at a sort of smaller number of riders, you can then play with fire a little bit and hang back a little bit and just make sure you're just getting past one rider each time. That's Micah Bronfacht who says goodbye to this race. Rider in the orange from the Netherlands is out. Bell rings again. Once more it's coming, who's gonna have to move up? That's how she's playing this. Some riders choose to make those sprints, don't they? Other riders, as you were saying, from the front. And it's still Archibald who hasn't moved from that front the whole race. There she is, Black Elmer on white jersey. Now Cumming doesn't have too much room to move into here, and she might be in trouble, I think. And that is the Kiwi saying goodbye. Finishes in 13th position. Not an ideal start to the Champions League for her. The riders in trouble here at the back, including Danielle Kahn, has to move up the British rider. Again, it's finding position within the peloton and on the track to do that as well. That can be an issue. It is an effort there from Kahn. In fact, there were four British Ooh. riders at the back, all competing to stay in the race. It could even have been near Evans. Sophie Lewis Sophie has been Lewis. called. Sophie Lewis. But yeah, but that was a, a tight one. Yeah, so you can spot Nia. She's on a very different bike to everyone else. She's on the same bike as Katie Archer, which is the bike um, the team we're using at the Olympic Games. And she was just playing with fire a little bit there. Less riders to watch here, but of course, less places to hide now in the Peloton. Had to move up from Williams. It's necessary. And I think another British rider is in trouble there. Yeah, it's Kate Richardson who says goodbye this lap. Great Britain going from five to three, just like that. Yeah, Kate having a very strong scratch race being in that early breakaway with Lily Williams. Not quite hanging on to the finish, but showing good form then nonetheless. Williams doing well here, remember, taking those 20 points earlier on. She'll be watching Archibald as much as she can. Two at the top of the league right now. It's a three-point lead for Williams after the first event of the night. Williams... He's there, just in a little bit of bother again, but once more moves up. This time, it's number 45, Olivia Balasaita, who has eliminated the Lithuanian in the yellow. Edderton getting smaller and thinner. Down to nine riders now. Halfway through the race. Stenberg moving up. Williams in a bit of bother again. Not for the first time, though, in this race. Can she move? Yes, she can. And out this time is Nia Evans. Former point race world champion. Goodbye. Current Madison world champion as well. Back in those rainbow jerseys now. Tonight, we're fighting for the Blue Leaders jersey of the UCI Track Champions League. Eight riders remain on track, and this is where you start to score better bunches of points in the league. Nowhere to hide now. Again, it's a late move up there. We're looking at the bottom of the track, I think, this time. 
And it's Sarah Van Dam of Canada, yet right at the bottom. And again, maybe she had the legs there, Joe. She just had nowhere to go. Yeah, that's the tricky thing when you're at the bottom of the track, that there's no space. You can't race in the blue band, band the coaches all. That's a safety zone. That's not part of the racing track. But I was impressed with Danny Kahn there, coming around a lot of people towards the end. I thought she was going to get caught out, but she got herself safely through that elimination. Work to do again this time, though. Room to ride into, and she does go around the outside. Keep your eyes on Gillespie at the bottom for Ireland. She's going to be in trouble here, and she's going to be eliminated. Lara Gillespie finishing in seventh place in this elimination race. And six sensational track stars are left here on the boards. Stenberg from Norway has the room to move up if she has the legs. Archibald again racing tactically beautifully so far here. Making the moves at all the right times. This time though, being eliminated, looked like it was Danielle Kahn. And we're now into the top five. Sevchikova has been quiet as well and in a good sense. Now then, issues here for Coles Leicester, I think, maybe. Let's have a look. Or is it Sevchikova who's going to be eliminated? Keep your eyes on this. Coles Leicester still there. Sevchikova. is out. But Coles Leicester's just had to put in a massive turn to get back on the group there. The bell will now ring. Mindful of that, she's tried to take up a little bit of a move on the front here. Williams is now going to come around. Archibald into third place. Does she have enough room to go? She can if she can have the legs on the back, and it is Coles Leicester who's going to be made to pay for that acceleration. And three now remain. Stenberg, Williams, Archibald. The lead on the night in the league yep. is between Williams and Archibald. Yeah, Archibald finishing second in that scratch race behind Lily Williams. Stenberg riding really well here to be up in this elimination race. Another very consistent rider to watch out for. Remember, Lily Williams taking 20 points in that first event of the night. Are we going to see the league leader coming to the fore here? Yes, we are, because Archibald is going to survive. Williams is going to be out. And it's a great opportunity now for Katie Archibald, if she can bring this one home, to take a race win and the league lead. But she's up against Anita Stenberg. Now the bell rings, Archibald waits, tries to move, can move, takes the position on the front. Here goes the gap, it's opening up, and this is a foregone conclusion now. Katie Archibald able to celebrate, riding in her first race win of this 2023 Champions League, and you're looking at your first Champions League leader. Race win and the jersey. What a start to the 2023 edition for the British star. That was a brilliant start to the evening, Phil. Fit finish to the evening for Katie Archibald. So second in the scratch race, win in the elimination. Lily Williams placing third, so she will take that leader's jersey this evening. Katie Archibald winning the elimination race, eliminating the competition and pulling on the blue leader's jersey at the end of round one here in Mallorca. And well, we've seen a lot of Katie Archibald victories, but that maybe was the most Katie Archibald tile type victory that I think I've seen. She was in control from the first pedal stroke to the last. Yeah, she, she's a fascinating rider to watch race because she's not afraid of having a go. She always races aggressively. An elimination race, you need to be able to be patient. You need to be putting in the work early on in the front to, to sort of stay safe. Um, but also not be not be working too hard because then once the group narrows right down, you've still got to try and win the bike race. But yeah, perfection there from Katie Archibald. She should be very happy with that. Perfection indeed, as Katie Archibald wins the elimination.
at his top of the league. Champions League's five rounds long. And at the end of the opening night, Archibald will be changing from those British colours to the blue leader's jersey for round two next week in Berlin. Twenty points to Archibald, 17 to Stenberg, 15 to Williams, who's had a very good night as well. She'll be right up there in second place in the Champions League with Cole Sleister, Sebj Korva, Khan, Gillespie, Van Dam, and Evans in the top nine. No points tonight for Gachiola, Olsen or Hesters in that elimination race. Still to be made. And given the delays we had earlier on tonight, we're going to go straight into Kieran action now. It's final time. Ten laps of racing left tonight, Joe. Yeah, this is it. Our final two events of the evening, the men's Kieran and the women's Kieran. A lot to get excited about here. Last chance for any of these riders to take a win this evening and potentially get that blue leader's jersey. Adi Lavaresen is in pole position for that, remember. He took the sprint win early on and 20 points today. Matthew Richardson trailing by nine points already. But of course, Kevin Quintero missing next week as he's off to Chile to the Pan Am Games. Needing a win here to then try and bounce back later on in the competition. He's the world champion and here are his opponents, Matthew Richardson. Champions League winner last year. Harry Lavresen back in those Dutch colours. Vaguely unusual for him, really. I'm not used to that. Either a leader's jersey or yeah, a world yeah. champ's jersey doesn't feel right, does it? And here he is, Kevin Santiago Quintero Chavarro. He likes us to use his full name, apparently. Yeah. Get his money's worth out of the commentators. There's Damon from Loan. This is Vasilius Lendl. Trains in Panavesis at home in Lithuania. And Tom Dechash, a potential leader tonight yeah. if he can win this. Second in the sprint competition. Second in the early league standings on 17. Derny's given the signal. We're all ready to go. The last big event for the male sprinters tonight. Who's going to take that jersey to the German capital next week? It's all up for grabs now. Five short laps of racing. Time to tear up the track. Positions drawn and they're ready. Dechash in position one behind the door. One lap to go of being paced, and then it will be the all out sprint. 750 meters, six riders against each other. So it's De Reich, it's Lendl, Van Loon. Behind in the world, Chap Quintero. Then Lavresen and his big rival. They're watching each other at the back already, those two. Richardson there. Yeah, you can see Richardson right at the very back. Lavresen keep looking over his shoulder, trying to see where Richardson is, waiting, knowing that Richardson's going to make a move at some point, but wanting to be ready for it. Richardson thought about it then. He saw the quick reaction from Lavresen and didn't go, but look at the world champion go. Kevin Quintero. A long, long way from the finish. The bell, though, will now ring. It's Lendl who's there. It's Quintero at the front. Lavresen's making his move. Richardson goes wherever he goes. Quintero's still there, but they're gaining. The stars are on him. Quintero in front, but here comes Lavresen. And Harry Lavresen bouncing back, arriving in Mallorca and grabbing back the lead leader's jersey. He lost out last year, but he is right back for revenge. Lavresen with 20 points and another 20 on top of that. It's a 40-point night for the superstar.
Yes, perfect night for Harry Lefrace. And this man here, Matt Richardson, we'd all been talking about him after his success last season, but not able to challenge him quite the same way this evening. And Lefrace is showing why he is the man with the most rainbow jerseys out of male track cyclists ever. Quintero went longer this time. Didn't quite work for him. In the end, a second place for Quintero, third for Richardson, with a victory for Harry Lavres. Let's get the numbers. Oh, he's broken that 2,000 watt barrier again. What a star. He's the star, the leader after night one. Delight for Labresen. He will very soon be exchanging that orange jersey for a light blue one as the leader of the Champions League. Confirmation of 20 more points to Labresen. The Flying Dutchman with a 40-point perfect night. A world champion has been defeated in the Kieran tonight. Second place for Kevin Quintero. And this is the first look at the league standings. It's already a 10-point lead for Labresen on De Rache. He has 14 on Richardson. Quintero with 20 there after a poor sprint showing, but he's up in the fifth. He misses next week. He's playing catch-up. Labresen, the early leader, and a long way. And look at that, Ronaldo. Not used to being second at the bottom of the league, is he? Dan Cole, the only rider, I'm afraid, who remains without a point. And we have one more event to bring you tonight. Next week. Paul Commissaire down there will be desperate to just get this one on the way. He waves the Derny across. He's looking at his watch. They're all looking at him. The riders have to concentrate here. They do. Last event of the evening. One final chance for a victory here. Or to take that leader's jersey. Five laps in. It's Kieran time. The final event of the Super Launch here in Mallorca. Series three of the UCI Track Champions League. Quintero looks on. What can Bayona do? Colombia just missing out on the win in the men's Kieran final. Bayona, you would not put it past her, even in this company, to take victory tonight. One more lap with the Derny, and then the fun really does start. Juniest at the front. Jeunesse in front of the Her wheel there is the Grendler. Derny says goodbye. Then you have the world champ, who of course is Andrews. Yes, and Kelsey Mitchell at the back there for Canada, the Olympic sprint champion. Jeunesse just looking over her shoulder at the front, waiting for somebody to make that first move. All eyes on Propster, who's the moon of the evening so far. 
Nothing doing until 500 meters to go. Now we get Andrews, who is the world champion, making a move. Elise Andrews at the front of the rainbow bands by Yorna knows it's an important wheel to follow. She does follow it. Hooks to now up into third wheel. She's got a little bit of a gap to close to get in on the act as well, but Andrews isn't budging right now. But Yona barging forward, bursting onto the back wheel of Andrews, but the world champion still stays there, going all the way to the line. And Elise Andrews, despite the challenge from Marta by Yona, holds on, takes the win, honors the rainbow stripes, and as victorious in Palma. That is what she came here for, to win in that rainbow jersey, all the way from New Zealand, a month travelling around Europe for the UCI Track Champions League, and she's taken the win in that rainbow jersey. How fantastic there for Elise Andrews. Night one and a massive win for Elise Andrews. Kiwi sprinting is in rude health, isn't it, right here? Marta Bayona, again as consistent as ever, that's a big one for her. Kelsey Mitchell beaten out of the top two. She finished down, by the way, in sixth place there. Third place going to Pupsta, who yet again has had a very good night. We'll say goodbye to Joe. She's off to talk on the telly for a little while. We'll hear her next week as we go to the German capital, Berlin. The numbers for Elise Andrews, well, very impressive again. 1,366 watts. Hey, on a try, didn't she? Busting around. But Andrew's holding so well. Mighty power there in the sprint from the world champ. And a congratulation from the closest challenger. They're enjoying these jewels. And again, it turns out the same way. Elise Andrews, who wins the final event of the night, the women's Kieran. Well, off she pops. She'll be putting on the leader's jersey in a moment. 20 points to Elise Andrews. Martha Bayona and Alessia Katrina Prupster. Lorraine Jeunesse fourth. Nikki de Grendel taking 11th and 5th. Kelsey Mitchell, disappointing for her with 10. Sets her standards very, very high. Hersman and Vecchi. The only two riders, I'm afraid, to miss out with points, and of course, Gachiola not yet here. It has been quite the opening night in Mallorca. We've seen stars winning, world champions victorious again. Oh, one New more names star to get the use with. And here in he the is, league. Harry Labresen, leader in the sprint classification. competition from the Netherlands, Harry Lovrason. Harry, the perfect start for you. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't wish for more. It was uh, really well and I was really happy at, yeah, with how every sprint went, actually. Yeah. 
How do you come into these uh, this league uh, mentally after a World Championships? This is Olympic year. Yeah. Some of the riders have chosen not to come here and focus on the preparations. What is your thinking coming into to this Trans Champions League? Yeah, actually, it is already my third season doing the league, and uh, I really I really like to race. That's first of all. So uh, I, I like to do these races, and uh, I, I really had a long run up to the, to the World Championship. It was like four months of only training. So uh, actually, I was really happy I could have some more races now, and I think uh, yeah, these races are really good for uh, for next year Olympics. Like, yeah, feeling the yeah, trying the tactics, but yeah, feeling yeah, feeling the sprint leads. It's, uh, I think it's really good. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked as though you're riding with more confidence. Um, not that you don't ride with confidence normally, <laughs> no, no. but it seemed like there was there was less pressure on your shoulders tonight. The sprint was relatively straightforward, but the Kieran, I thought you dealt with the you know the threat of yeah. the Colombian Quintero world champion who had only ridden one sprint ride and had relatively fresh legs. Yeah, but you, yeah. you took that race on and you made it your own. Uh, yeah, I felt pretty confident going in the in the Kirin. I, I was actually, I was pretty tired after the first four sprints, uh, or the three sprints in the Kirin. But then we had, uh, I think, an hour rest before the final. So I also felt fresh again, a bit fresh. Uh, so actually, yeah, I went in, and uh, I think I think my positioning was really well. Like went here in front of me, Richo in the in the in the back. I couldn't, yeah, I could wait really long. So I was actually, uh, I just made a plan and I did it and worked out. So yeah, love that. Well, listen, huge congratulations! The perfect start, a ten point lead already <laughs> on the first round. Enjoy the moment. Thank you. Thank you. A perfect start indeed. And Chris Hoy, of course, knows all about taking home those big championships. Of course, next week we'll be in Berlin, in Germany. Round two, fast enough.